in the 1970s, Marvel Comics started publishing a fun little series called What If, a series that explored hypothetical questions surrounding events and characters in the main continuity, but often went off the rails, or journeyed into territory that would be far from realistic in reality. As sometimes these what ifs throw all logic to the wind and opt out to be completely absurd, hilarious, and even ever so slightly self reflexive, meaning often their concepts were downright crazy. So today we're taking a look at a handful of these glorious stories that appeared in the series with our list of the top 10 craziest Marvel what ifs. Let's jump in. Starting us off in at number 10. What if Thanos joined the Avengers? Let's begin our list with something a little topical. While what ifs are going through the minds of millions of people excited to see the upcoming Avengers Endgame film, we're fairly certain that this particular what if hasn't translated into a fan theory about how the drama will play out. Enter what if Thanos joined the Avengers. Lulz. It'd solve a lot of problems in the MCU right now, wouldn't it? Or create a bunch of problems. Anywho, this storyline comes from one of the more recent what if issues out there, What If Infinity, which explores a bunch of Infinity event related topics. Thanos dons a Captain America uniform, and during the Infinity storyline, he joins Earth's forces against the Builders rather than using that conflict to take advantage of Earth and go after the planet himself. But that doesn't mean that there's a happy ending. Thanos ends up helping the Avengers defeat the Builders much quicker, and still ends up domineering in classic Thanos behavior. Up next, number nine, World War II in space. For starters, the concept of World War II happening in outer space is flat out ridiculous. Here we have Nick Fury and the Howling Commandos going around smoking cigars in their spacesuits, of course, like literally in their space helmet. That's like not good for oxygen, guys, FYI. It's full 1970s sci fi glory, friends. Now, to be fair, this issue dropped shortly after the release of the first Star Wars film, so you can kind of see why Marvel would jump on that bandwagon. So, what was the logic behind this story? Well, it took place in a reality where Leonardo da Vinci's flying machine designs went to production early and therefore accelerated Earth's technological advancement. Leading to World War II to be fought in space. Fury and his crew fight evil space lizards and Terran traitors on a space station. It's a standalone issue, of course. Up next, number eight, The Blob's Demise. The Blob, aka Frederick J. Fred Dukes, first appeared on the pages of the X Men issue 3 back in 1964, created by the Dream Team duo of Stan Lee and Jack Kirby. Now, the concept behind him is quite simple. He's huge, and has mutant powers that give him superhuman strength, endurance, durability, resilience, and near impenetrable skin. He also has his own personal gravity field. How fancy. Anywho, in 1993, in What If the Hulk Killed Wolverine, this story featured the Grey Hulk going on a rampage and murdering Wolverine, which ultimately led to him being challenged by the other X Men. He slaughters a bunch of them, and then comes across none other than the Blob. While fighting Pyro, who shoots flames at the Hulk, Hulk grabs the Blob and uses him as a human shield to defeat defend himself from the fire. Naturally, this burns the Blob alive, and results in Hulk tossing Blob's corpse onto Pyro. Not so immovable now, are you, Blob? It's kinda dark. And at number seven, The Monstrous Four. This little story came to us in the 1990 issue of What If the Fantastic Four All Had the Same Power? We get to see the Fantastic Four in a slew of different iterations, one being in which they all became horribly deformed monsters, with Ben just still being the same regular version of the thing, which is like kind of insulting a little bit. Reed becomes a purple version of the Hulk, Johnny becomes the original gross, mushy version of the thing, and Sue, well, her transformation is the worst. She turns into Man Thing. For context, this is Man. Thing. Or technically, I guess she's the invisible woman thing, which kind of maybe makes it a little bit easier to be that hideous. Ugh. Anywho, she can't speak, she just gestures and cries, and everyone freaks out about it. And then Reed makes the call that they're all too hideous to ever leave Monster Isle. On a less depressing note, in at number six, Hall Monitor Frank Castle. Appearing in What If Volume 2, Issue 34 from 1992, this story is as comical as you'd think. Frank Castle is a Hall Monitor at a school of super powered human beings. As you can imagine, showing mercy to his fellow students isn't something that he does willingly. It's also been criticized for not being the most well written what if on the block. Perhaps the best takeaway from this storyline is how many of its panels are absolutely wonderful when taken out of context. Like this one, a Frank Castle shouting, Hall Pass? while firing off a little hand cannon. Yeah, maybe not the most sensitive in this current social landscape now, is it? On a less depressing note, this story takes place on Earth 89110, which is also the same Earth in which the Hulk became a high school hall monitor. Not sure if I'd want to go to school on that Earth. 
that's for sure. Moving on to number five, what if Dr. Doom was a pediatrician? Need I say more? Yikes. This story also appeared in the same issue as Frank Castle Hall Monitor, but is a wee bit more absurd. Doom would treat his child patients with torture devices. Cause that makes sense, Dr. Doom. Moving on. And at four, Dazzler as Galactus's Herald. Oh, Dazzler. While Girl is getting her own animated series on Disney's streaming service and will surely become a beloved character because of it, well, hopefully, back in the day, the character was often seen as quite the joke. Created back in 1978 as a cross promotion with Marvel and Casablanca Records, she was a singing superhero who could convert sound light into beams of various forms and intensity. She was also a highly accomplished roller skater, so, you know, easy to make fun of. Anywho, Marvel kind of rolled with that, no pun intended, and put together this hilarious what if, in which our girl. Dazzler took Silver Surfer's place, only to realize that she's not really up for the gig since she's having a hell of a time coming to terms with the fact that she needs to find planets for Galactus to consume. She also develops a big old romantic crush on him. As you can imagine, doesn't really pan out too great. And made readers feel that this story was particularly groan worthy. And at number three, a thousand hulks. <laughs> I don't know about you guys, but the idea of a thousand hulks running around on Earth is like not something I'd ever really want to see in real life or in the panels. Hulk is super OP. It would be utterly terrifying. Such was the case in this story. What if the Gamma Bomb spawned a thousand Hulks? Now, the title of this issue is slightly misleading. The Hulks don't spawn from the Gamma Bomb, but rather are birthed from the radiation from the bombs dropped on Hiroshima and Nagasaki at the end of World War II. This event spawns a ton of Hulks that Bruce Banner then studies, and then these Japanese Hulks end up taking over the US for 40 years. Nick Fury eventually rallies all the other heroes to fight back, and the end is super ambiguous, never really revealing the outcome of this conflict. Just know that there's a lot of hulks. And at number two, you are Spider Man. Nothing like a bit of meta fourth wall breaking to spice up a story. Am I right, Deadpool fans? Well, in this case, not so much. Compared to other comical what if issues, this one actively makes fun of the reader and even has a page in which the comic tries to encourage you to paste your own picture of your face over top of Spider Man's. And the outcome? Well, the cover gives it away. All of Spidey's enemies stand over your grave laughing at you. Because being a hero is hard work, you guys. And finally, in at number one, Gender Swap. While this one may be one of the smaller stories to ever appear in a what-if comic, it's literally just a panel, it's perhaps one of the funniest what-ifs that Marvel has ever published. Why? Well, back in the day, Stan Lee had a wee bit of a grudge over the fact that in 1976, DC Comics came out with a character named Power Girl. In 1978, he said, I quote, I'm pretty annoyed about that. I've got to ask the Marvel lawyer. She's supposed to be starting a lawsuit about that and I haven't heard anything. I don't like the idea. You know, a year ago we brought out Wonder Man and DC Comics sued us because they had Wonder Woman and I said, okay, I'll discontinue Wonder Man. And all of a sudden they've got Power Girl. Oh boy, how unfair. But back to the panel now. It reads, what if Wonder Man were a woman and Power Man were a girl? This along with a fun little caption that read, Dear Marvel, our lawyers advise you not to print this gag. With love, your distinguished competition. Distinguished competition, aka DC, aka DC Comics. See what they did there? It's like Stan never really got over that one, did he? All right, there we have it, friends. What other what if issues do you think were absolutely absurd? What's your favorites? Give us a shout in those comments below and fill us in on your thoughts. And if you dug this video, why not hit that like button? Show us some love. We've also got a nifty little playlist currently flashing on your screen, just begging for you to click it. It's filled with a lot of comic goodness, so go on and give it a look. In the meantime, though, thanks for watching, friends. I'll catch you all in the next one.